I'm building a two trailer tiny house and it's time for a build update. So it's been a while since the last build update and that's because I took a couple of weeks off. I'm doing this stuff seven days a week and I talk about building and filming. I've got a couple other projects on the burn and I was just starting to hit the wall. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen the saga with the window timber where I cut it the wrong length <laughs> multiple times and had to get new timber and machine it up. It was just a nightmare. I wasn't even making good mistakes. It was just silly mistakes. So I'd ordered my glass and it was gonna be a three week wait. And I decided, you know what? tools down, I'm taking some time off. But the important lesson in that is I should probably tell you when I'm taking some time off. I was overwhelmed with the number of people who reached out to see if I was doing okay. You guys are bloody legends. I can't say how grateful I am for the people who took time out of the day to see if I'm doing okay or I haven't crushed myself underneath the crane. Well, I'd probably post about that if I did. So thank you, I really appreciate that. And if you're watching this and you know someone who's been a bit out of character, a bit distant lately, reach out, see if they're doing all right. But enough on that for now, let's talk windows. So I said in a previous video that I really wanted to build my own windows. And that's because I wanted to be able to work with some natural materials, so timber. Um, I kind of was going for a look and feel that I wanted to create. Mostly, I just enjoy the challenge, but I really <laughs> underestimated how much work it was gonna be. Um, that's why it's taken me so long to get a video out, is because before, before I went on leave, I was flat out building these windows. There was so much work that went into machining up all this timber, sanding it, shaping it, doing the brass inlays, joining them up into frames, doing the weather strips. And now I'm at a point where I'm about to tap the glass to the windows. So it's a good time to show you what I've done to now. And I'm gonna to have to actually split this video up into two videos. I'm gonna show you what I've done today. And uh, then we'll look at how I finish assembling, assembling them and putting them onto the house. So let's have a look. So the design brief for the windows, I really want to make them out of timber, but I didn't want to expose timber on the outside of the house that I had to maintain. I want to keep them really minimal and I want to be able to make them myself. So I love working with timber. It's one of my favorite materials. The problem is, is what I learned from the micro tiny house is I didn't want timber on the outside of the house that I had to constantly oil. Well, I like to tell myself I'm going to, you know, regularly oil the windows so that they, you know, stay in pristine condition. I, I don't. And <laughs> on, this, on this house, they're gonna be much higher up, they're much larger, it's gonna be a big pain. And any, any traditional construction that I would have done would have had timber on the outside. And I want to try and avoid that if I could. I really want to keep the windows minimal because inside the tiny house, we've talked about wherever I am in the house that I can sort of see out of a window and my eyes drawn outside of the house so I don't feel like I'm in a box. So I wanted to keep the windows minimal so that it draws the eye out easier and you've got something nice to look at. So I didn't want you know, a ton of powder coated aluminium frame that's interrupting my view. I wanted to frame whatever scenes on the outside and have something really nice to look out of. So the construction I've gone with for these windows is to create this timber box that forms the structure, the reveal and architrave of my window. In fact, it doesn't even have any architraves. What I'm going to do is to bring my fly, ply, my plywood, my plywood down where it meets the window, flush level with the outside of this timber frame. So my plywood will come down, it'll be the same level as the timber frame, be a shadow line between here, and then it continues straight through into the window. And because I have no frame in here, the reveal continues through to where there'll be glass, completely uninterrupted. Now doing the timber for the frames was problematic. I've gone with Victorian ash, which is this beautiful Australian hardwood. It varies from sort of straw through to strawberry blonde. It's got a really nice grain and gets these gum veins in it, which gives it like awesome character. Problem is this stuff is really heavy. So to combat the weight, I've machined the timber down to two different thicknesses. On the edge here, I have 30 mil, which gives me my nice thick solid edge and makes it look like I've got a solid window but then I've stepped it down to just 20 mil, which reduces heaps of the weight out of the timber. I can then use my window packers in here to support it when I put it inside my wall frame and I can screw it firmly onto the wall frame. So once I had the timber machined up, I made it up into a box. And to do that, I've mitered the corners and put a biscuit in and screwed them together. Now, I didn't really want to do miters, but it ended up being the best looking option. The reason I didn't want to do miters is first of all, they're a lot more work. The timber was too wide to get into my um, miter saw, which meant I had to do on the table saw, and that was a 
pain in the butt to do because if you don't get these mitres right, they show up terribly. So that was a lot of work. But the other reason was moisture. When I get condensation inside my window with a mitre, actually directing that moisture down through to the end grain of these two pieces of timber. And that's not a great idea. So to combat that, what I've done is when I've joined these two pieces of timber together, I've actually compressed beeswax in between this joint and the wax stops the moisture going down inside the joint into the end grain of the timber and making it swell. And the reason I've gone with wax and not glues or anything like that is first of all, it's natural and I'm oiling and waxing these timbers anyway, um, and it's much easier to work with, but also wax is hydrophobic, as opposed to using a glue, for instance, that is not hydrophobic, so it won't repel the water, whereas wax is. So hopefully that'll stop moisture going down inside my joint here because it's on an angle and uh, wrecking the corners of my windows. Then on the other side of the window, I've polyurethane on these metal fins that along with my damp coarse plastic is going to provide the weatherproofing that seals up against my foam cell on the house. Now, don't worry if that doesn't make sense. I'm gonna do a video later about how the weatherproofing works and you American guys that are watching this probably going, what the hell are you doing? Cause you do it very differently. But I'll come back to that in a later video and explain how the weatherproofing actually works. Then the last part of the window you notice is this brass inlay. And I, I wish you guys could see how good this looks. I've, I've seen it on video and it doesn't do it justice. This brass inlay up against this Vic Ash when it's oiled looks a million dollars, like so good. I, I wish you could see it. But the real reason I've done it is how I'm going to stick my glass onto my window. Now to explain how the brass works, I need to explain how I'm going to touch the glass. So the glass is going to stick directly onto the outside of my window. So I have my piece of glass here, which gives me a seamless look on the inside because it just sticks onto the edge of the frame. But from the outside here, I have no exposed timber. I'll then have custom bent flashings that come up to the edge of the glass here and a glazing wedge that will seal up between the glass and the flashing. Now, don't worry if that doesn't make sense. I'm going to come back that come back to that in way more detail in a later video, but it gives you an idea of how I'm going to be finishing it. But the important thing is, is how this piece of glass sticks onto the frame. So they'll have to, what I have to do is to run a bead of adhesive around this frame that this glass then sticks down onto. Then what I'll do is seal up the edge of the glass up against these metal weather fins. Give me a completely watertight seal from the glass through to my weather fins that go all the way through to my uh, foam cell in the house. So the adhesive is the reason that I've had to do this brass strip here. If I ever break a window and have to service the piece of glass, I would have to take all of the glass out, cut away this adhesive, and then scrape it back to level so I could lay a new bed of adhesive for the new piece of glass. But don't worry about too much of that at the moment. My next video is going to be how I attach the glass to these frames and assemble them. And I still don't actually know how I'm gonna to manage to do that, particularly because some of my pieces of glass are like two and a half meters by a meter high, like 30 kilos of glass that I have to position millimeter perfect and because I'm laying it down to a bed of silicon I can't sort of get it in the wrong spot and move it and move it around I have to put it in exactly the right spot first time somehow by myself onto the glass I'm using now I didn't actually work this out myself I had a glazier come out and look at what I was doing and work for me to work out what the most appropriate glass would be um, and that was actually a pretty interesting conversation uh, when he got here he's like looking at what I was doing and I'm like oh you're gonna stick the glass on he's like okay we can we can make that work and then I was showing him the different windows I'm doing and he's like oh that's a big window and we're gonna be bouncing down the highway he's like okay okay and then we got to the frameless corner window and <laughs> it's like two pieces of glass on these like walls and that could flex as this house is gonna bounce down the highway <laughs> and he goes will supply only. <laughs> I don't think he wanted to give a warranty on the window, which was fine because I only wanted to supply the glass, but he was actually a legend and worked with me to work out what the most appropriate glass we could use to make sure it's gonna be strong enough while we still keep down the weight. So all the glass we've gone with is five mil toughened glass. And we've gone with toughened because Unlike other windows, my windows don't have a frame around them. They're just stuck onto the frame. So aluminium windows have a frame around the glass and sort of su supported by rubber seals, whereas I don't have that. Um, so five mil toughened glass, with the exception of my frameless corner window, which we've gone with eight mil toughened glass. Look at this stuff. <laughs> it's huge. Um, so, 
it, it's it's pretty heavy. The 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 large pane of that is actually as heavy as my um my largest window. But we've gone with the the eight mil because we're gonna have these two pieces of glass joining on their edges um, on the corner of two walls that could flex differently on a house that's going to travel down the highway. So we've gone with that thick glass to make sure I can get a good good seal where I join the two edges with silicon uh, and also that the glass is going to take any forces that are applied to it. I am a little bit worried about the weight. They're pretty heavy and I am only adhering it onto that frame, so I'm hoping <laughs> it's going to be sufficient. So if you've made it this far in the video, you might be left wondering one thing. How do the windows open? The answer is, they don't. Which might seem a bit crazy at first, but as I was going through the windows, I was trying to design opening windows, which you'd normally expect, but it meant I ended up having heaps more material. I still had to have this outer frame, that I had to have another frame of that was independent that swung with a piece of glass in it, and then more frame in here so that that swing frame could butt up against there and be weatherproof. So my windows are getting really heavy. I was moving away from that minimal design where I'm gonna have a lot more frame in here, and they were gonna become a lot more complicated. And so as I was looking at it, I'm like, what am I trying to achieve with a window? I want natural light, I want views out of my tiny house, and I want airflow. And so I was achieving the first two, but I wasn't gonna airflow. And I thought to myself, I'm like, why does airflow need to come from a window? What if I was to rethink passive airflow? And so I'm not gonna have opening windows, and I've got another way I'm gonna create passive airflow in my tiny house. But we're gonna come back to that in a later video. So that's the window so far. I've had to condense weeks worth of work into just a few minutes. So there's things that I've had to skim over. If you do have questions about the design or construction of these windows, ask them in the comments down below and I'll respond to you if I can. Uh, the next steps, I'm gonna take this glass and stick it onto these frames, which as I mentioned, is gonna be a monumental task. I haven't fully worked out how I'm gonna do that yet, but we'll see how we go. Um, you guys know the drill, don't hate, educate, comment down below if you see something in this video that can be improved. Also, if you see something the design of these windows that could still be improved, please comment. I'd love to hear from you because there's a lot that I've thought about, but I'm sure there's stuff that I've missed. The one thing I haven't mentioned is condensation. Now, I have given thought to condensation, but we'll come back to that in the next video. In the meantime, go build cool stuff, check it on your friends, and uh, I'll see you guys soon.